Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I would like to ask that we go into executive session to uh, to discuss the House of Reserves and that we pass the motion to talk about the next one. Yes, there would be a motion to go into executive session and to the attorney's fund. I would like to ask uh, Mr. Finder, uh, planning director, to come forward and provide some information on the many penetration exemptions uh, for water at the address of 3400 block of South West Union Hills. Thank you, Mr. Finder. Thank you. Thank you for being here as the head of the chair of the Navajo. We're going to go through a little bit of the background on the page and then we're going to do the page and then we're going to go through the questions that we've got in the back of the page next week. So we're going to check you for it. It's a small page, but it's a good time to question. So we want to make sure we have that part of it. All right, we're going to go through the details. Um, and 
so it would not be in the best detrimental interest for concerned to our country from the point. That's where the entire policy there. The state of policy, you know, I'm not going to claim the right to serve the continuation of the CO2 uh, plus lots of division. And so it's more of a 20 acre plus amount of lots out for 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 class or non fat lots so that you can preserve our rural character, our private cities, and also encourage contact development and cost effective service delivery uh, within the city. So that, that's kind of going the policy. I mean, I mean, why that's a good idea is really why did why you do that? Why is that something you want to continue? So I'm really just connecting the city water. We don't, we, outside the city limits, we do not receive property tax. And so it's, it's neutral in terms of property tax. So we, we get water fees, but it just goes to water for water fund. When we stretch out our, our water lines and whatever services we have, we do have a higher cost of service delivery. Um, and we don't have a, a return on investment as much as it was a point of dense development. Um, think of it this way if you have the same section of water lines, uh, would it be better to put 10 homes or 100 homes on that same section? You're better off to our investment uh, in terms of cost of dense development. And then also, some people in this are our neighborhoods for residential as well as in, in property tax. And it kind of, uh, in essence, undermines some of our general um, fund revenue and receives our service tax by, by again, competing with our fund neighborhood within the city. And lastly, it, it, by allowing this sort of uh, risk to occur, it does impede the city's ability to grow its compactness. Um, we bump up against a lot of these. Facts that our fuel sinks are above, uh, then we have to reply there without it to fill a, a denser development and increase the amount of costs. So, <clears throat> that is in itself is kind of long. Uh, the, uh, the result of the last six or so years of this sort of pre 2007 policy, if you will, was we did not keep up with the percentage of our population within the city. Uh, that's what we, the code is designed to and somewhat now. Um, we went from the last 50 years of having 84% of the county population in the city to 71%. And that equates to a loss um, or a potential uh, loss of revenue of, of uh, 23,000 people within the city, which equates to about 6 to 10 million of residential property tax every year. So it's pretty substantial that our policies are aligning with the um, ability to grow Compactly and, and over. So, going back to your specific request here, um, you have you have the code that requires annexation, but then you also have some exemptions. Uh, the, the, the water has seven exemptions, two of which we provide as exemptions. Um, two, one for economic development, and one is for a hard six months created by the of the applicant. And in both of those, and you have approved those exemptions in the past. Tonight, the request is for the hardship, uh, hardship kind of thing that's not created by the actions of the applicant. In the past, um, the approvals that have come, uh, the cases that have come before you really centered on where the lots existing prior to us changing the rules um, in those hardship cases. People got caught up in this investing in property, buying a property, getting ready to build on a property, and then this came rules where they could not get in, and then you know, had a water line or a fuel line uh, that would buy the property. So that, that was really um, as far as where the engineers put the intent and what the exemptions are designed. Um, in this case, the specific, and there's a check map on the back of your current application of the property, subject property. In the detail. The request in the 3400 block of, of Indian Hill is, is a simple one lot um, tract. It was split off last year from a large uh, historical tract split off from a residential tract. So it is a water line, a pretty water line that runs in front of the property. And it, it's located right directly in the right area. Um, the character of the area is really 
group that came in here to find out last spring, just as a bunch of Indian heads and get each and every state of those obviously didn't have guns to work out those kind of projects. Do you have any of those types of people who don't have the people who find them as a confusion in the So, uh, when you get into the hearing the request, that's what the two things. One, you know, how does it meet? Does it meet our code? And you turn it in terms of our code. And then also, is it, is it consistent with our policy? Uh, as far as the code goes, that's an issue of determination. You know, there is a hard thing that you find. I would just, from our, from our standpoint, try not to look to see as though well, um, if someone is creating a new law, uh, which is what this case is about, then the action was really, in part at least, the applicant's action. Uh, if there was a, a pre existing law prior to 2007, something that was before the rules change, um, then we, 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 we caused the hardship uh, by changing the rules. So that's kind of how we look at that. Uh, we don't think it's just as much of an that, that test. And then as far as our policy goes, um, in of itself, the area is it's the size of the law, uh, somewhat inconsistent with the area. Um, however, by creating a greater density, it's not consistent with our comprehensive plan because you can't, from our standpoint, you can't have the same people on it uh, a lot by itself. The area around it is not, um, not as consensus and so we, we would have a hard time just transferring the area where it is in some less than some areas it doesn't meet comprehensive plan. Policy. It does require, I think, this method to translate to the the hand of the agency staff. Um, that's something that's pretty hard and that I'm not really talking about then. And then one of the critical that the previous action the body has taken, this body has taken, we're not, it's probably been about five or six of these over the course of the last five or six years. Uh, we're exempt um, for the hardship case based on the law title being still in service before the rules change. Uh, or it can be uh, a, a criminal case, I mean, I don't know, but as was the case the, the last time, a couple months ago, we got a, an exemption from the existing traffic in South Africa and Ontario. Uh, the the landowner was able to, to uh, have, a, have a financial density um, for the two buildings, the two homes, if you will, to translate to. So he was able to have two different styles in that manner. And if we go there, we we're going to have a bunch of development in that area in the future. Uh, but, so that's, that's what goes into this back of you. The recommendations um, really are what the planning public works does recommend is approval of that based on the fact that the law was created after a rules change and then I want to say the, uh, uh, not being consistent with, with, with our policy. Uh, there are some other options that go out if, if there's some consideration that is you know, discussed and that includes any fine tuning the agency staff to, to make sure that we do not have the hardship to our land that created after the 2007 rule change. Uh, we also could look at updating our senior plan to update our comprehensive plan to identify the areas that meet may not all be still in service. They may be two acre areas, may be 10 acre areas outside the city. Um, based on their current, their current furniture, uh, and then we could also identify some of the school service areas where we have surprise all school service city services. Sewer water, roads, police, fire, that we can run into or already are into and, um, and have those as our, as our sort of tier one, if you will, kind of service areas. Um, so there's a couple of different options there, but our main recommendation would be that this is not consistent with what's been agreed for the hardship case in the past and this is not consistent with our any questions? That's all I have for now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This parcel, the original pre-2012 parcel that this is now part of, was determined under the previous official act 
California, or Lake Wind County, but now they're, they're selling a portion of it. Is that uh, how this is being created? That, that's correct. Yes, that is the, the parent stock, the blue yellow, the dye one in yellow. And I'm not, I'm not, uh, it was sold as the, the red stock was sold at auction by the so each of these up and just like that, all that area west of Indian Hill, uh, right? There is a residential tree line on each of those. Uh, now, do, are they all receiving city water and other materials? Uh, they're not all sure. Um, most could be on city water. I know that there's the storage the area line between where the city stores and the side of the world is. And this particular part of the, the question is, is it the which the long water line? The which the long city water line? I put it as well, but the question came out. Yes. So the question is, uh, is it city water? Along those same lines, um, I really appreciate your taking the time to approach this from a from a land use planning perspective because I think we need that and I think we need to spend more time on this. Um, so, so I do appreciate that. That said, usually we get the use of the map to show us where the city limits are, where that three mile zone is, and where the water lines are, and which which properties are on the water line, and. And I'm feeling a little lost without that on this map. And further, though, it way predates my time on the council. I know there are issues in Sherwood, so I realize that those boundaries may not be just a simple line as they are in other parts of town. And I think to make, for me to make a good decision on this, I would appreciate that other map as well. Because, you know, it, it, it taught me as it did the mayor, if the water line is going right down the street, I didn't know it, it's fair that it seems logical in a way to have to be on it. If everybody else is on it, I think you should know that if, if that's possible. And then you mentioned sewers, and in the same city, they're willing to go on sewers. There's no city sewer out there, or there is city sewer out there? Well, it's county sewer. County sewer, okay. Okay. Just, um, and, and, yeah. and similarly, um, we have been shown in the past where other properties have done consent to mm-hmm. just so we know whether there's, there's a lot of it or none of it. Yeah. Um, I, I would, um, rather than ask those questions one at a time, I would really appreciate being able to have them out like we have on city and we'll see if we can see it. Sure. Thank you. Does the city and the county have to consider? Are we consent on the water and the city? Is the city consent on the city? Well, no, it's the county, so we have a county. Um, it's, it's kind of a new term in terms of they, they can help out the county school, but there's no rules for the county school for them to come in the city. So it's the city county school. Yeah. But is the city or county school? It's the county school. I may have more questions once I can see that other map, but I just think that would be really interesting.
Father, we look up uh, tonight around our nation, those who are suffering, those who have lost home and life, family, possessions, and in some senses, the future of the world. We ask that you would give them comfort from the assistance that they were so desperate in. Lord, we are one man and the God. And so we come to you now as one concerned people for others. We pray for those government leaders who um, have to carry on to do these that are before them like the duties that we have in our church, yet with these other responsibilities. And so we look and ask you to ask for great wisdom and understanding. Lord, we lift up these members of this council, our mayor, our city manager, and staff of this uh, incredibly blessed city. And with our challenges, we have opportunities. We thank you for those who have stepped forward in leadership here and who have said yes, who have sacrificed uh, much of their time, and uh, the challenges that this city faces with stretching themselves forward because here I am. Lord, show me what to do. So I ask tonight that in this meeting and in the days for the rest of this week and the rest of this year, that you give these men and women great understanding, great wisdom, great compassion, and great connection with each other in this community so as we strive to make this the place that would honor you and be a place for all citizens to live, to enjoy, and to prosper. There are no proclamations this evening. There are no presentations, so we will proceed with the roll call.
So thank you um, to acknowledge um, that the process works and um, to also acknowledge that our outside world creates the conditions and conflict different than what is really um, ideal or good. We try to as we are engaged and trying to try to work through any of this. So this process is moving forward and it's going to be posted on Council next day. So just wanted to express gratitude. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, then we will move on with the agenda to new business and final slide. Thank you. 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 
kind of looking at our budget hearing that was, you know, um, that we wanted to say in June, but having said that, that was just like a recap from our last year, like two years, and maybe what we should be doing, what we'd like to do is um, to be able to do that for the first year, and then we'll be able to do that for the next year.
we will, we will as, as the deputy mayor has uh, mentioned in her comments, um, we will be starting the budget season in July. Uh, there was a conversation about starting in, in a little bit earlier in June, but based on travel schedules and the new council members joining us, uh, the first meeting will be uh, at the beginning of July. We will put out a complete schedule within the next couple of days to just confirm some dates so uh, everybody can be very familiar with when it's for and when it will begin and the steps in between. Uh, we're really going to focus on educating people, engaging citizens, getting input, making sure that we put you in a position to make the most informed decision we can and position the city for a very strong financial future going forward. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, to make an introduction. Uh, there's a new assistant to the mayor, Vicki uh, Green, with Vicki Lee Sharon. Uh, so you, you know who she is, uh, working with her in the mayor's office. Uh, Vicki worked for the state uh, for a number of years, and we're glad to have her here with us uh, making an introduction to the mayor. Uh, I'm going to start with the first of these invitations. Some of the council members. Everywhere, and had a huge price on it, wasn't it? Which is what I'm going to do with some of the money that they 
it's it, it really awesome, and, and I think that there's great for our kids and great for the people, and we see that a lot more coming. So I just want to give her kudos for all that she's done. And I think you did it, and you can do it, and she's just so full of the news, and the heart can be so it's amazing, and so that's something that we should be really be proud of. Um, I want to also encourage you to go to the Fire Ops 101. Um, I won't be attending because I already have my helmet and I did attend and I made it up to the bus and I met Mr. Alpha. He got such that training for the kids. Um, and so it's, it's awesome to gear up and go in the smoke houses. Um, and I was supposed to bring a map out the window, but the guy was kind of, you know, helped me out and I brought a young man out the window. But um, it, it's awesome to be. To see what they actually do and, 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 and to go through the smoke house and, and you know, to touch somebody out of the car. And I don't think that Chris and I made it, but <laughs> we, we really, it, 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 it's really awesome. It gives you just a different perspective of what our fire department is. And so um, I want to say this year I'm going to have to with police department and, and do them and really honor as well. But, but it's just something that you can appreciate. And I do have a helmet that sits in my living room that I'm very proud of. So, I encourage you guys to go today and, and to be a part of this because um, it will change the face of the next day. Anyway, um, I also wanted to thank our police compliance. I've taken a lot of properties for the answer, and they built the next one for us, and you're right. Our city crews and all crews are very crews. We don't give them enough credit. Those guys do a lot of work, so um, a lot more than that time that we put into that. We spent some good time. I just want to give a thank you for that. Thank you. 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 Sharing with you, I know that her voice is new. There's an article in there by what I'm speaking about on the front page at the bottom, and it follows on with the second page. And I may need a few more minutes after my story just to tell the story, which is the fourth page of the two days ago. A friend of mine that I grew up with, he had four sons, and both of them had a condition to where they are dying of he didn't have that condition for a long time. What happened is that fortunately he had a son like that and his son was quick and stuff. It may seem like he wants to get people to get out. So a friend of mine, my other friend, Nick Bongardi, who's the owner of the Kansas Power Home football team, I asked him if he would dedicate one of his games to help these four guys try to raise awareness for the disease as well as see if he can get the kids, if that's a piece of the gift squad yelling out to the youngsters. And, with, and maybe there's a match right here for us all four because it's very rare to see that they have it. And uh, he only has four sons, and they all have it collectively. There's about 10,000 or so across the nation that are in need of bone marrow donors. And then Nick did, of course. Coyote has always been very close to Congress's company, and Jim Green, the head coach, who I also went to school with at the Women's High School in Dallas. Uh, it just seemed like all the stars had a lot for me to ask him as quickly as I could with this. And so this Saturday after the season finale, Jim, sitting back with that note by he wanted to write the whole season to get to come out and to get swapped, to get on the register, see if they could save a life. Um, we come as early as 5 30. And as a kicker, Nick called me today and he's going to make an admission to the game totally free for everyone in the city of Topeka. He's 
to encourage them to come into this world and be on the right so that we can make the best of this I know that there are very few people who see us to do this. just never know who in this city has been blessed that can save us from this life. I would like to thank, of course, the Kansas City of the Kansas Highway Tournament, the staff, the players in the city, the Metro Boys School, the Grand Yard, Mayor Wolbach, and the City Council for their support. And the third message we got in the family in advance for coming out and supporting this cause. And I thought we'll thank you both. If you would like more information about this, uh, about blood cancer, you can go to bleedbloodcancer.org. And if you want any more information on it, please contact. Uh, you can read more about it on Kansas Highway's website at kansashighway.com. On the website, there's a video of the Mary Brothers. It's a very compelling video. And then you can go on to hear some of the testimony about those who have given blood to him. Thank God. I hear that there will be a front image from the mayor, which I'd like to thank you in advance. And the deputy mayor for uh, not being able to be there, but hoping that the make it there. I'm going to try to manage this little video to give that proclamation. So I'm very, uh, I'm very honored that the city is helping in this, in this one time event. And Finally, if anyone would like to volunteer, they can uh, call Nick Von Diner at the campsite. There's a way to the numbers on the website there. And come on down and I would like, you know, the coyotes are the same thing. You know, many people, if you don't want to go to the game, come early, get swabbed, get on the registry, and leave. But I would like to see those people to uh, do whatever that they can to find as many people who can come and to take these things away. I thank you very much for doing this particular time. It's true to acknowledge your efforts uh, on behalf of this family and for putting this together. And I was to receive a request for the proclamation and was more than happy to fulfill it. Unfortunately, I had a previous engagement for Saturday evening and for every mayor to the people of the state. And so it was true to have some nice people willing to be there to present it. And certainly wish you just best wishes and that you have a full participation. I believe that there's someone in Topeka who has spiritual resources somewhere and that's on the ground. And thank you so much for being able to support everyone else. Okay. And thank you. Any other items for the council? Yeah. We are adjourned.